I want to show you some things in the Word today, so turn to John chapter 13. Uh, normally, I have you turn to two passages of Scripture, but we're just going to turn to one this weekend. John chapter 13. This is when Jesus washed the disciples' feet. And it's absolutely amazing to me, something that I've never seen until about two weeks ago reading this passage, and it jumped off the page at me. It's amazing to me also what God's doing at, at Gateway. Uh, we don't in any way compare ourselves with others, other churches. We're all on the same team. But we do compare ourselves with where we've been, uh, all of us, and where God's bringing us to. And that we're in a healthy church. And we're grateful to be in a healthy, Bible-believing, Spirit-empowered church. Would you agree with that? So we're grateful for what God's done. But the reason God's done it, I believe, is that He has empowered us because we continue to humble ourselves before Him. And that's very, very important. So I'm going to share with you a little bit uh, about some things that have happened, some places where we're going. I'm going to show you some Scripture. Uh, let me just tell you, though, uh, if you open your bulletin, you'll see some 2011 ministry highlights. They're right there in the, um, that color there. What color is that? Well, see, I was going to say blue, but I figured someone would say it's aqua or, you know, some stupid name. For anyway, there are only five colors, ladies, so just leave, leave the others out of it, all right? There are five basic colors. Okay. At least to men there are. All right. <clears throat> so in the blue part. And uh, let, let me, I'll just highlight a few of them for you, all right? Let me, and, and after I say these, uh, I think it'd be appropriate, it's okay to, to uh, bless the Lord, all right? 1,920 adults and 998 children accepted Christ last year at Gateway Church. Isn't that exciting? Okay, now listen to this, 21,847 people were prayed for at the altar. Over 21,000 people received prayer at the altar. 1,426 people were baptized last year. Is that something to thank the Lord about? And just one other, just to let you know, after we built the new building, how we can accommodate more people, 31,000 562 attended Truthical, our music, musical, and 346 people accepted Christ in one weekend. One weekend. So, that's exciting to me. Now, our vision statement, and I'm not going to preach on the vision statement, but just to remind you, our vision statement is a process, so that's about the only way you'll be able to remember it. But I think when you, when you see it as a process or an assembly line, you can remember it. Our vision is to see people saved healed, set free, discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving. And, and in essence, when you realize you really can't be empowered and serve the way God wants you to until you're discipled and equipped, but you really can't be discipled and equipped until you get healed and set free, and you can't get healed and set free until you get saved. So that's kind of that process there. I want to key in on this word empowered. This is what the Lord showed me in, in John chapter 13. Uh, my staff makes the comment frequently that I am the most empowering leader that they've ever worked with. And I get asked that a lot. I guess asked that on, uh, I got asked that la last night after the service. I did a, um, a television interview. I get asked that uh, in, in magazine interviews all the time. I get asked that in pastor's forums that I host, pastors, if, if we're going to have a question and answer. You know, I hear about uh, how, how um, empowering, what an empowering leader you are. I want to be more of an empowering leader. Uh, why are you such an empowering leader and how do you do it? And uh, to be very honest with you, I normally make something up. <laughs> the reason is I didn't know until a little over a week ago. And I, I read in John 13 something and I realized why Gateway Church is an empowering place because of what I read about Jesus. Now remember, this is right before Jesus washes the disciples' feet. And it actually tells us how the creator of the universe could bow before the creation and wash their feet. It tells us. So John 13, look at verse 3. It says, Jesus, now here's the key, knowing 
that the Father had given all things into his hands and that he had come from God and was going to God, rose from supper and laid aside his garments, took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Okay, knowing, knowing, Jesus did it because he knew these three things. the first one. We know where power comes from. Here's number one. Number one, we know where power comes from. This is why we can live an empowering life. Okay, Jesus empowered the disciples. The Bible says that he gave them power to preach the gospel, to heal the sick, and to cast out demons. There was no insecurity in Jesus. There was nothing, uh, uh, no fear or worry or concern in him that if he knelt before these that, that were serving him, they might take over. He even had, I want you to remember, he even had a traitor in his midst. But the reason that he could empower others is because he knew where his power come, came from. It says, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands. In other words, he knew that his power came from the Father, and only the Father could affect his destiny. No one else could. That many, many leaders are not empowering leaders for a couple of reasons. Number one, because of insecurity. They think, if I give power to someone else, that person might rise up and take something away from me. Listen, you can't take anything away from me unless God takes it away from me. And Job's response for this, the Lord gives and the Lord takes, blessed be the name of the Lord. And if the Lord does take something away from me, I don't want it because it's for my good. And so when you understand that all power comes from God, and by the way, here's the other reason that leaders aren't, aren't empowering, is because they, don't think, they think if they give some of their power away, they'll have less power. If I give you power, that means I'll have less. Now you have to understand where power comes from, power comes from a limitless God. So, actually, if I give power away, whatever we give, we receive. The more power and authority I give, the more power and authority I receive. And again, power and authority to be able to help people, not for my own benefit. Uh, one of the funniest verses in the Bible, okay, I hope you, hope you see this as extremely humorous, because it is. John 19, verse 10. Now, you may not laugh out loud, but inside you'll say, hmm, that's kind of stupid. All right, John 19. Verse 10, you don't have to turn to it, but <clears throat> this is when Jesus is standing before Pilate and he won't talk to him. Then Pilate said to him, are you not speaking to me? Now, this is what I think is so funny. Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Okay, this is why it's funny. He's talking to the creator of the universe. <laughs> and this is a man who's about to die, by the way, in a few years after this. Do you not know I have power of you? I'm surprised Jesus is going to. <laughs> Jesus answered verse 11, you could have no power at all against me unless it had been given you from above. One version says, from my Father. That's where power comes from. When we understand that, when we understand where our power comes from or where our influence comes from, then we can minister to people. You know, we have worship songs that, at Gateway Church that are being sung all over the world. All over the world. And I mean all over the world. I don't mean in a few nations. I mean all over the world. Revelation song that came out of this church is now the number four worship song in the world. In the world. Now, but, 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 where's our power come from? It comes from God. And do you know 
God exalts those who humble themselves. We have to continue to kneel down and wash people's feet. We can't stop now. We can't say, well, look at the influence God's given us. We have to continue to do what we've always done, and that's humble ourselves before God. So we know where our power comes from. Here's number two. Jesus did. We know where we came from. We know where we came from. That verse again, John 13, 3, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into His hands and that He had come from God. And then in a moment we're going to talk about and was going to God. He knew He'd come from God. He, he knew where He came from. Okay, you say, well, He came from God. Okay, listen, I came from God too. I just took a different route. I got off track for a while. And that actually helps me to minister now because I know that God's the only one that got me back on track. And so the only way I can minister now is by His grace and His mercy. I know where I came from. I know where I came from better than you know where I came from. I know. This guy even said to me a while back, he, I don't know why people do this, <clears throat> take me down a notch or what, I don't know. He just said, he said, I know your past. I said, I do too. <laughs> And that actually gives me the confidence to minister because only God could redeem me. Only God could redeem my mistakes. I know exactly where I came from. I came out of drugs. I came out of alcohol. That, that stuff is not, has not been that difficult for me to overcome the shame of it. And I've told you many times, I have an immoral past. It's taken me years to overcome that because of the immorality that I was involved in. And because I got saved at 19 and immediately went into youth ministry, I should not have done that. And then after I got saved and was in youth ministry, I failed morally and had to step out of ministry three years and go through a restoration process. And the enemy would beat me up with that because you did this after you were saved and after you were in ministry. And I mean, he just beat me up with that. And it was handled scripturally, biblically, everything was handled, you know, in the way it should have been. And actually this March, 1987 is when it was uh, taken care of scripturally. This March is 25 years. Here's the great news. 25 years I've walked in purity and accountability in this area. And I know that God can redeem us. <clears throat> and the reason that I stand up and share something like that is so that you will know, because many of us have made horrible mistakes, but if we respond correctly, God can redeem our lives for the kingdom. We can do something for the kingdom still. So I know where I came from. I also know where we came from. I remember 30 people in, in our home. For our first meeting, we had 30 people. Josh, my son down here, was in that meeting. Matter of fact, he took the kids upstairs, you know, and, and uh, all the kids were upstairs. So when I say 30 people, we counted all the children, and we had a pregnant woman, and we counted her twice. I mean, life begins at conception. That, that baby's in attendance, you know, so. <laughs> and 30 sounds better than 29, you know, so it helped our, our, our records there. <laughs> okay, I, I remember the Dollar Theater. We, we met for three weeks. That was all we could stand it. We met for three weeks in a Dollar Theater, theater that went out of business. Okay, now, the reason I tell you that is because you know that it's bad when people won't even pay a dollar to go there. And it's where the Uncle Julio's is in Grapevine now. We met there three weeks. And then for 15 months, we met at Christ Our King Church on South Lake Boulevard, at, right by the uh, Chick-fil-A there. The pastor is David Whittington. I want you to always bless. Every time you drive by Christ Our King, I want you to say, bless them, Lord. Just do it right now. Say, bless them, Lord. Because I went to him after we started, and we're now in the Dollar Theater, and we knew we couldn't do it. And I, and I got the idea of having a service on a Saturday night in a church building because they wouldn't be using it Saturday night. They'd be using it Sunday morning. And I went to him, and I said, is there any way we could rent your building on Saturday night? We've started a new church. And he said, absolutely. I've been praying for more churches to start in this area. Well, most pastors don't act that way. And so we met for 15 months without a Sunday morning service. So I remember that. I could remember a lot more, but I'll tell you one recently. I remember that we built this building in the worst economic recession in most of our lifetime. That's God. And not only do I want to give glory to God, I want to give thanks to you. Because I know you sacrificed for us to do this. And there was only one reason, because it may have been the service you were attending wasn't that full. It may have been. So you thought, well, I'm, I'm comfortable. But you did it because you saw there's a bigger picture here, and we've got to reach the kingdom. So, we know where we came from. And here's number three, we know where we're going. 
We know where we're going. And that again was John 13, 3, where he said, and I know where I'm going. But let me show you another place where he actually said this very similar. John 8, 14. John 8, 14. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true for or because I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. Now, let, let, let me again just go back to the, the vision statement. The vision statement, again, uh, just look at it for a moment. To see people saved, healed, set free, discipled, equipped, empowered, and serving. Okay, let me just say a couple of things. Um, to know where you came from is the saved, healed, and set free. See, I knew where I came from, but I had shame for many years. And the healing and the set free part is what helped me now to go on and do something for God because I got healed and set free from the shame of my past, okay? And to know where we're going is the empowered and serving. In the middle, disciple and equip is to know the Father has put all things in our hands. You won't know that the Father has put all things that you need in your hands unless you get disciple and equip. But the empowered and serving, that's how we know where we're going. Let me tell you how you know where you're going in the kingdom of God. Listen very carefully. It's that you begin to serve in the local church where God's called you. As you begin to serve, your destiny and your calling will come alive to you and you'll begin to understand. Even if you begin serving in an area that's not your calling and your destiny. But that is how God brings it about. So that's how we become empowered. So I want to share with you some, uh, some places we're going as a church in 2012. The elders have been praying over some of these for years. And God has spoken. It's now time to do it. He's now opening doors for us to move this way. And so as I share each of these, I am so excited about them that I really want you to clap after each of these. Okay? Here's, here's one of the first things that we're doing in 2012. We are expanding the Blessed Life television show. So, and... One of the things that I'm excited about this is because some of you don't know, uh, and I think I didn't get to tell them to change this, uh, but we're in, it, we're in 90 million homes, which it's actually now 100 million homes in America, and 200 countries around the world. 200 <laughs> countries around the world. Uh, Debbie and I don't, don't go in any restaurant. I'm not talking about just locally, obviously, but I'm talking about in, in Maine, in Washington, in, in Seattle. Uh, in L.A., in, in South Carolina, in Florida, uh, and, and listen to this. We were in a while back, Egypt, London, and Israel, and in Egypt, London, and Israel, people came up to us and said, we watch your, your television program. So God is using us to take the gospel. Something you might want to think about, I know we have cameras, and, and it's a little different. Maybe you didn't grow up with cameras in church. I didn't grow up with cameras in church. I understand that. But every time you see one of these cameras, I want you to understand, I'd like to rename them, they are missionaries. Because they're carrying the gospel to places we're not going physically. We're here, but we're sending the gospel there. So that's one thing we're doing. Here's another thing we're doing, all right? Number two. Oh, and by the way, wait, wait, I got to tell you one more thing about the television. So, we're on Thursday nights at 9, but we're adding Sunday mornings at 9.30. So, so our program will be on Sunday morning at 9.30. It will not be alive, so you still need to come to church. Okay. All right, here, here's the second thing we're doing. On September the 19th, we are beginning the King's University at Gateway to train the next generation. This is the university that Dr. Jack Hayford founded. I am now the, the, the chairman of the board of that university. And it will be like the King's University Gateway will basically be uh, in name, if you understand, like UTA, the University of Texas at Arlington, all right? It's the King's University. It's fully accredited. Uh, some of you will want to take classes. 
and your, many of your credits will transfer, obviously, depending on which degree you have. We can't transfer all credits from a civil engineering degree to a Bible degree. Everyone understands that. Um, but some will. And so you can go all the way because it's fully accredited and it's a university, uh, bachelor's, master's, even doctorate all the way. So we'll be, we're on track, so keep praying because it, it, it was a bigger task than what we thought to begin a university, uh, but we're on track for September 19th. And because of that, here's another, because of that, <laughs> and because of how much you have given in the last few years, we are keeping our building on South Lake Boulevard. So, and not just for the university, we're going to make it a multi-purpose building so our youth, singles, uh, young adults, um, uh, different groups, equipping, weddings. There's not many places to get wedding, get married now. Uh, you know, it's difficult. You don't want to get married in a 4,000 seat sanctuary with your eight friends, you know. So, <laughs> so we'll be able to do a lot of things in that building. Some of you read in the papers um, that Glenn Beck was going to buy it. He wasn't able to. It didn't work out financially for him. And so they rented a studio, and we just, we, felt, we just saw it as a sign from God. The city said they were going to buy it. They didn't do it. And so we saw it as a sign from God, and because of where we are economically, that we could uh, do that. So uh, next, we are launching today the Gateway app, APP. So look, look right here. I'll show you. Here's the app coming up, and you're going to be able to learn all about the church all about different things, contacts, maps, all that stuff. You'll also be able to have news, sermons will be online, events will be online. We'll also have each campus. You can go to each campus to find out what's going on. And then you'll also be able to watch the services live on your iPhone. Isn't that good? So that's launching today. Uh, let me tell you one other thing. We are working on other smartphones, iPad, all that. But we want, so right now it's on the iPhone, but it won't be long till it'll be on all smart devices, all right? And we're all smart devices. <clears throat> so, um, I told you this a while back, but we know, we know the official date. Gateway Scottsdale will be launching September the 9th this year. <laughs> September 9th, our first Gateway Church in another state. We went, we had an interest meeting. I'll show you a little bit from the interest meeting. Uh, we had about 65 people at our first interest meeting, and uh, Pastor Cody led uh, worship. There's Pastor Cody with four very good-looking people in the front row. <laughs> and then I shared a little bit about our vision, and then Pastor Preston, who's going to be the pastor of Gateway Church Scottsdale, shared a little bit. This is the building that we're going to meet in, the Scottsdale Center for the Performing Arts. It is much nicer than the Dollar Theater. Uh, outside is, is a beautiful courtyard. Look at the courtyard, by the way, Scottsdale. The weather, you know, is very nice there, so they could gather outside. There's even a, um, uh, this is the lobby. I was going to say there's also a, what's the outside a rink thing? Amphitheater, amphitheater, yeah, amphitheater. Uh, this is the lobby. See how large it is so people can gather. This is the, uh, actually the Performing Arts Center. And then we'll, if we go, we'll go to the stage and kind of show you a picture back to show you what it looks like, and uh, they're over, it seats over 800 people, and uh, we've got it under contract, and September the 9th, Gateway Church Scottsdale is going to start, so that's pretty exciting. Our, um, our Frisco campus is doing fantastic. I want to say hey to everyone at the Frisco campus, and obviously because we say Pastor Preston is going to Scottsdale. Then uh, we, we are putting in a new campus pastor at Frisco, and uh, we, every elder was uh, unanimous about this. Every senior member, senior staff member, we knew that God had put his anointing uh, on this man. The new Frisco campus pastor will be Pastor Randy Cochran. Uh, here's a picture of Randy. Most of you know Randy. Uh, Randy, if you don't know, has been on staff six years. He has been associate pastor at uh, several other churches, uh, Trinity Fellowship in Amarillo being one. He's also been a senior pastor of a church. For six years, he's been doing gateway groups. 
So if you've been in any group, Pastor Randy Cochran is the one that has been the, the head pastor of that, the lead pastor for all these years. And so, um, Randy, you might have stood up and waved at Frisco. If you didn't, then you can stand up and wave. And if you want to, you can just sit there. But anyway, we're happy <laughs> about it, all right? Uh, North Richland Hills. Let me tell you something about North Richland Hills. North Richland Hills, we have extension campuses. North Richland Hills, as far as I know, is the largest extension campus in America. It is absolutely amazing. They have an 800-seat sanctuary. They have multiple services, five services on the weekend. Listen to this. They have 5,000 in attendance. An extension campus with 5,000. Way to go, NRH. Because NRH is doing so well, though, this has actually um, motivated the decision as we've been praying about where to put our next campus. And we looked everywhere, and we found a campus that is seven miles west of the North Richland Hills campus. So we right now have a signed contract, and we are going to be buying another building and starting another campus this year. And let me just show you where it is. It is at Beach and Basswood, and it'll be our Gateway Church, North Fort Worth. Uh, notice up to your right is Gateway Frisco. I mean, I'll just walk all the way back here. <laughs> There's uh, Frisco right over my head, Gateway South Lake right here, Gateway NRH, and then right over here is at Beach and Basswood, Gateway North Fort Worth. And let's just blow that up so they can see a little better. Notice it's in that corner there of 35 and 820. Uh, right up beach, and then there's Basswood, and then here's where NRH is, see, not very far at all, but we have a whole lot of people that live in this area that could go to the North Fort Worth campus, and then NRH can continue to grow. So, we're excited about a new campus, right? And I'll tell you something else that uh, you'll get excited about because of you and you being the most generous church I've ever been a part of in my life, we're paying cash for the building. So, pretty exciting. Uh, we, bought, we bought the North Richland Hills campus for 3.5. Uh, they were asking 3.9. Uh, we offered less. They came back at 3.2. We offered a little more. They came back at 3.2. We offered a little more. They came back at 3.2. They said, we're not going below 3.2. We've gotten our elders meeting then to pray about it. And that day, I had read about Gideon putting out a fleece. And the Lord said to me, I'm going to give you that campus for $3 million, and that'll be the fleece. And so I shared with the elders. They said, I bear witness with that. And so we went back and said, no, it's $3 million or nothing. They said, okay. <laughs> so, so we're buying the bill. Now, we will finish, need to finish it out, all right? And so we'll talk about how we'll do that and how you can be a part of that as well. But we're starting another campus. Styles and formats may change over time, but the richness and hope of God's Word and its teaching always remain constant. The Blessed Life Small Group Curriculum, based on Pastor Robert's best-selling book, The Blessed Life, is now available at Passages. This dynamic, interactive curriculum can be used in a small group setting for personal study or even during your family devotions. To purchase the Blessed Life Small Group Curriculum or any of our other many resources, visit Passages at Frisco, NRH, or Southlake or visit us online at passages.gatewaypeople.com. Um, uh, let me just tell you one other thing that we'll be rolling out. Next weekend, I will be in Japan, Debbie and I, speaking to all of the pastors in Japan. It's absolutely amazing how all the pastors come together for a once-a-year conference, and they only bring in one speaker. Last year, it was Pastor Jack Hayford. I'll be there next weekend. Uh, you will not be fatherless, though, I promise, because Pastor Jimmy Evans will be here, and he's incredible. So, um, and then I'll be back the next weekend, 
and I'll be, I'll be beginning a series called Created to Be. A new series, it's four weeks, Created to Be. Now notice the word B is just the letter. The reason is that a, a little over a year ago, I got together with our executive staff, and I said, you know, I, I would like something that people could really remember and that they could um, answer the question, what is Gateway expecting of me? If I come to Gateway Church, what is Gateway expecting? And the Lord gave us four letters that begin with B. Surprise, surprise, God gave me four points that all begin with the same letter. Um, but here they are, believing. If you want to know what is Gateway Church expecting me? Believing, we want every person believing. Notice not just to believe, because it's on, ongoing. Believing, belonging, becoming, and building. Every person living a believing lifestyle, belonging to the family and belonging to the group and the people that God has, have, has put you with, becoming a disciple, becoming all that God has for you, developing your gifts and your strengths, and building the kingdom that we're serving others and building beyond the walls here. So, on the last week, this is what I want you to understand of where we're going. Um, we've done capital campaigns in the past where we've made two or three year commitments to be able to build the kingdom or enlarge what God's doing here. And you've always responded tremendously to that. Here's what we're going to start from now on. Uh, the way we're going to see ourselves expanding, uh, like to be able to expand Frisco, to be able to do the things we need to do here at NRH, to be able to finish out the building on South Lake Boulevard, to be able to finish out the new campus, Beach and Basswood. Most people, most people that attend Gateway Tithe. Most do. And that's, that's incredible. And most give over and above their tithe as the Holy Spirit speaks. We've been giving over and above our tithe. When I say we, and I did like this, but all of us, uh, for Project 114 for three years. We've come to the end of that campaign now. But most want to give an offering, not just tithe, but an offering over and above. So what we're going to do at the end of this series, when we get to building the kingdom, we're going to give a special heart for the kingdom offering, where we'll all give a special offering. We've given special offerings in the past, all on one weekend, come together. Most of this offering will be able to start to be able to finish out at uh, Beach and Basswood to start that process, a few other projects we have. But then I'm going to ask you to make a one-year commitment to the next Vision Sunday from about March to February that you'll make a one-year commitment of what you'll give, whatever the Holy Spirit tells you, over and above your tithe, and it'll be designated building the kingdom. In other words, like right now when, when Debbie and I give, uh, we give a, a, a base 20%, and then we give more as the Holy Spirit leads us, but 10% tithe and 10% offering. We're going to do that no matter what, uh, what we're going through here at the church. We're always going to give that. So for the past three years, it has said, temper, it's, it's said one half. Every time I write a check, it says one half tithe, one half project 114. Now, that one half, I want you to understand, is a full 10%. It's a full tithe, okay? So you can't half your tithe. But I give half the offering that I give goes to that half. So from now on, it'll say tithe and building the kingdom. And for the next one year, I'll make a commitment. I'll let the church know this is how much I'll give over and above. And these are the people we're going to call kingdom builders uh, here at the church. Now, here's, here's my desire. I want every person to be a kingdom builder. And this is the reason I'm not, I'm not saying it has to be a set amount or it has to be a set percentage, because I don't know your budget, and I want the Holy Spirit to lead you. So any person that gives over and above his or her tithe is a kingdom builder, and then we're going to have special events for kingdom builders throughout the year. So we'll begin that. I just spoke with a man this Friday, part of our church, in 2002, 10 years ago, during a message he'd been praying about starting his own business and the Lord spoke to him over and over again. And he'd been talking to his life group about it. And it was so obvious, two people in his life group came to him after the message and said, well, well there's your answer. You know, did you catch it? So he started his company in 2003. He said, Robert, it has grown, grown, grown. It's unbelievable. But one of the things that God put in our hearts was really tithing and giving over and above our tithe. We had tithed, but to give over and above. And he said, here's what blew me away. When I got my giving statement from last year, I said, I never thought I could do this. And he, he, he has tears in his eyes while he's telling me this. He's choking up while he's telling me. He said, we gave 22% of our income to the church last year. We gave more than that to other places, 22% to Gateway. And our business grew by 24% last year. 
so all of us can give however the Lord leads us. So start praying now, and, and then I just want you to do whatever the Lord leads you to do. Let me show you two scriptures, and then we're finished. Notice it said, the Father put all things into my hands. Okay, here's what I thought about. Well, sure, the Father put all things into Jesus' hands. Well, what about me? What about you? Well, what I want you to know is that the Father gives all of us everything we need to fulfill our purpose on earth as well. And I want to show you a couple of verses. John 3, 35, it says, The Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hands. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into His hands. Okay, so right there it's almost like, well, yeah, God gave Him everything He needed. When it talks about putting things in your hands in the Bible, it means what you need. It's what you need to accomplish what God's called you to do. Well, yeah, God did that for Jesus because He loves the Son. And we think, he doesn't love me as much as he loves Jesus. Well, the only problem with that statement is that Jesus directly contradicted that statement. In his prayer in the garden, in John 17, verse 23, he said, that the world may know that you have sent me, now watch this, that the world may know, and have loved them as you have loved me. Can I tell you something? The Father loves you as much as he loves Jesus. The Father loves you. And he will commit everything that you need to fulfill the mission and purpose God has for you into your hands. He knows where you came from and he knows where you're going. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And I want you just every week, I, I kind of lead you in this little prayer. I want you to just ask the Lord, Lord, what are you saying to me through this message? I want every person empowered and serving in the kingdom. I want every person fulfilling the purpose that God has for each life. Every person. So I, I want you to just say, Lord, what are you saying to me? And we want to pray for you. If you're going through any type of difficulty, and we all go through difficulties, you don't have to be a member of, of Gateway Church to come for prayer. Well, you know that. No one's going to look at you funny. There'll be a lot of people coming for prayer. We're going to do this at every campus and in every overflow room. So if you're in the overflow room at North Richland Hills, we will have people at the front of that room to pray for you. If you're in the second level at South Lake, we have people by all the exits to pray for you. And I ask, we sing one more worship song, and I ask that no one leave during this time unless you have an emergency. I understand that too, if you do. If you don't, the reason is it's part of our service as well. And as we worship, we create an atmosphere for the Holy Spirit to be able to minister to people. So if you need prayer for any area of your life, in just a moment, at every campus, we'll stand. And as soon as we stand, then you just stand up, step out and come. The reason we stand, it makes it a lot easier for you just to be able to slip out. And it's not even as noticeable because everyone is standing. And I ask you just to come to the front, whatever room you're in, and there will be leaders there to minister to you. So if you need prayer for any area at all, I want to emphasize that, any area at all in your life, let us pray for you. And no matter which campus you're attending. So after I pray, we'll stand. And when we stand, you just step out and come. Holy Spirit, I pray you'll draw every person at every campus that needs any prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I was 19 years old when I gave my life to the Lord and everything changed. I didn't have any desire to go back to that old life. I wanted to walk with the Lord and learn more about Him. And some people helped me to learn the Bible and to learn how to pray and to learn about my new life in Christ. And that's what we want to do for you. I am so excited that you've given your life to the Lord. He's forgiven all of your sins and you're on your way to heaven. But we need to learn some things now about the Bible, about prayer, about some basics of the Christian life so that you can be victorious and live for the Lord like I know you want to. So we've designed a class called Fresh Start. And I want to encourage you to sign up for this class because we want to help you grow in your walk with the Lord now. I love you and I'm so proud of you. Deciding where you want to invest your life's work is one of the most critical decisions you will ever make. With a multitude of challenges in today's job market, Gateway wants to come alongside you and help. Are you seeking a job or needing an employee? 
the Gateway Job Center can help. The Job Center is a place for employers and job seekers within our congregation to connect with each other. Just log on with your Gateway One username and password and begin your journey. Visit jobcenter.gatewaypeople.com today. 